My name, if you guys don't know me, my name is Jen Dobson. Um, I am a student loan expert, debt management specialist, and an author, but I am not a good mic connector, so let's see if we got that. Are we good? Perfect. So I have been doing student loan debt management for the last nine years, okay? Um, I started off doing student loan consolidation back in Pennsylvania for a company. We were actually getting people interest rates on student loans as low as like 1.625%, which was outrageously unheard of, especially today, you'd never find that. Um, and then um, the company moved me down to Florida, and from there, they decided to go to Boston. Well, I got acclimated to the weather, I don't like Boston, I stayed. I started my company called Degrees of Success about four and a half years ago. I've been doing it ever since. My company focuses on student loan debt management, so reduction of student loans for students through different programs. Uh, there's lots of programs, I'll talk about uh, a few of them tonight. Uh, we also specialize in increasing credit scores, getting people out of debt, um, learning the tools that they need to figure out some of the basics that they just were never taught. And then we also help families that have those students that are actually going into school to make some smart decisions, things like steer clear of private loans, you know, um, things like, you know, don't do the parent plus loan, it's not necessarily advantageous. So we teach those families some of those different ways, as well as FAFSA, grants, scholarships, all of those different things. Um, and I'll go into a little bit of that later on. Is that the reason why most people don't deal with their debt, and the reason why most people get into the situation they're in is because of fear. It's fear that keeps you from going out on your own as an entrepreneur. It's fear that keeps you from like looking at that bill that you got in the mail because you, you don't know for sure exactly how you're gonna handle it. And in most cases, if you get past just the fear of it, you can recognize your own ability to accomplish whatever goal you wanna accomplish. And learning debt management and learning how to handle your debt is a big part of that. Um, now, for those of you that are here, and I don't know um, everybody's situation, but I'd like to ask at least one person to come up. I wanna, I wanna, I want to ask somebody a question. Who's going to volunteer for me? <laughs> the little guy put his hand up. I like that. I like that, but I need an adult this time. Come on, any takers? Any takers? No? No? And, that, and that's okay. That leads to a really good point. Here. Exactly. You know, I have no idea what I'm going to ask you. You have no clue. You have no idea what I was going to give away for free either. But see, that's the thing. Fear keeps us from answering a simple question that I was just going to say, hey, do you have any idea what your credit score is? You don't have to tell me what it is. Do you know what it is? Cool. But the problem with most of us is that we're afraid to take the initiative. We're afraid of the opportunities that come around every second of every day. That could be perfect for us, but fear is what keeps us from reaching out and grabbing hold of those opportunities. And opportunities are everywhere at all times. Um, so now, just to kind of go in a little bit, um, a little quick background about myself. So growing up as a child, I lived in a household of fear. It was all about fear. My mom was, you know, scared of all kinds of things and kept me very, like, in a box growing up. And maybe that's the reason why now I'm, like, fearless. And I probably just decided to go completely opposite. So in my life now, I mean, I ride a motorcycle on the weekends, um, I scuba dive, I snorkel, I skydive. Um, I do everything that this life has to offer, and I do it without fear. And it's part of the reason that I was able to start my business four years ago um, and maintain it to this day. And it's also the reason why I was able to write my first book um, this year, which is called Failing Successfully, Life After Debt. Um, and basically in the book, just as a little side note, is it's all about fear. It's all about overcoming all of the things and the issues that we have in life and recognizing that we can accomplish them. And trust me, there's a lot of stuff in here about my life, and if you would read it, you'd be like, how did you get to where you are? But it's because I said, it doesn't matter, I'm going to overcome my own fears. And so I have. Um, now, just to give you guys a little tidbit um, into student loan debt management. So, how many of you have student loans? Anybody in here that actually has student loans? So we have a couple. Okay. So with student loans, um, there's a lot of programs that the government allows you to reduce your student loan payments. Now the problem is, is that most people have no idea. 
we're at one point almost three trillion dollars in student loan debt right now. Okay, um, that's a pretty large number. Trillion dollars is higher than credit card debt, second to mortgages. Okay, so the reason it matters to all of you in this room, even the ones that don't have student loan debt, we're talking millions of people that are suffering with student loan debt, which trickles down to all of us, especially those of you that have businesses. So if your client comes to you and they want to buy something from you, let's just say you own a salon, you know, you do hair. Well, guess what? They don't have any extra income to go out and get their hair done. They can't afford it. You're trying to sell them insurance. Well, they can't afford insurance. They haven't gotten over the $30,000 in student loan debt. They can't buy that first house because they've had $500 monthly payments in student loans. So it's important for all of us to recognize how much that trillion is. Um, does anybody have any idea like how long it would take to count to a trillion? I know you might know because you remember from the last event. How long does it take just to count? Like one, two, three, you just start counting today, you don't sleep, you don't eat. How long does it take? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Now, you guys are going to be shocked. No idea. 31,709 years to count to a trillion. Okay? That's how big that number, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I checked with some math whizzes. Um, that's how big a trillion is. We have 7 billion people in the world. We feel like it's pretty, pretty cramped, right? $1.3 trillion is way bigger than that. Okay? So that's how big the problem is. Now, out of that, we're almost at $100 billion past due. Past due. That's, that means that these people are delinquent. Their payments are late right now. And here's the problem. Millions and millions of them every single year qualify for repayment options as low as zero. Do they know? No. They have no idea. You know why? Sally Mae doesn't do a real good job telling them. They don't care. They're not going to tell them. So let me give you an example. Let's say you have, and I get a lot of clients that have a pretty large amount, and that's because they went to grad school, they're attorneys or doctors, $100,000 in student loan debt, okay? Let's say you get out of school, even my doctor's residency, maybe $40,000, maybe $45,000, okay? At that income level, let's just assume they're single, no kids, they still qualify for forgiveness. Their original payments on their student loans would be over $1,200, actually closer to $1,500 per month for $100,000, which because $100,000, I mean, that's a mortgage payment pretty much. Um, through the IBR program, they'd be making payments less than $300. It's a big difference. And that's at $45,000 in income. Now, let's say that they um, make $75,000 in income. They're doing okay. They still qualify for a reduced payment of more than $500 every single month in reductions. That the government is just saying, here you go. And it's not hurting them on the back end. Why? Because the government is actually kicking out dollars every single month to cover some of the differences. Same person, $100,000, $75,000 in income. Guess what? They qualify for forgiveness. That means government's going to pay off that balance. Now, there's three different forgiveness programs, so it depends on which one they fall into. Um, IBR um, forgiveness, for example, is going to be after 25 years. But hey, if you still got student loans, why not get it paid off? You know? And student loans, right now, um, you're looking at 30 years to pay them off. It's basically, again, a mortgage. Um, if you're in the public sector, so say you work at a nonprofit, say you are an attorney for the Attorney General's office, if you're a doctor, um, you can qualify for forgiveness after only 10 years. And my doctors, even if they're making $150,000 a year, still qualify because they have a debt load. Um, but most people don't recognize that those different programs exist. Um, there is seven different repayment programs that are available currently. I won't go into all of them, but we got IBR, we got ICRA, we got um, you know, graduated payments, and then of course you got your standards and so forth. But there's a ton of different options. But if you don't know, you don't know. And that's the, that's the thing. And if you're not told, so if you got Sally Mae loans and you call them up and you say, hey, you know, I, I'd like to know, like, what can I do? Um, they don't know. You know why? They're making eight bucks an hour. They don't care. That's not their job to tell you what your options are. 
it's your job to learn about what your options are. And if you don't want to, which I don't blame you, you call somebody who knows. I mean, there's a lot of information out there. I got a blog that gives you all the details about just about everything that there is to know about student loan debt, um, which obviously is free. Um, and then on top of that, you also have people that are in default, people that are going through garnishment. Um, most people don't realize that if you go through a rehabilitation, you can get out of default and it gets cleaned off your credit like you never did it. But if you didn't know that, you didn't know that. Um, and your payment can be as low as zero. So you could have a rehabilitation payment of zero to get you out of default on your student loans. But you have to know these things. They're not going to offer them to you. Um, there's a lot of tricks of the trade. And that's the biggest thing is that I think what happens in most cases is that people are so scared to even deal with Sally Mae or deal with Nelnet that they don't even take the initiative to try to sit down and figure it out. They just let the bills pile up. I have clients that haven't paid their student loan bill in five years. Guess what? Their wages are being garnished and then they call me. Help me, oh my God. <laughs> like you haven't paid in five years. What did you expect? But you know what? I can still get them out of garnishment. Um, it's a little more challenging, but it is doable. So the biggest thing that I want everybody to recognize is that there is so many different options. And then just to go into quickly um, credit as well, just to give a couple little tidbits for people that may not know, with credit there's lots of different options as far as fixing your credit, building your credit, and the main thing is just knowing what these options are and understanding what your credit score is made out of. Okay, so just briefly, um, for example, Time value. Does anybody here understand the time value and how it affects your credit? Some of you? I see like three heads nodding. Okay. So with your credit score, time value makes up about 10% of your score. Okay. And what that basically means is that, for example, I took out a credit card when I was 18. God, that was 19 years ago. Um, <laughs> so, uh, 18, 19 years ago, I took out a credit card. Now, if I close that card right now, I've gotten rid of 19 years of good credit. And now I'm starting over from scratch. So now when they do and they, they take my calculation of time value, I've just reduced my time value. And guess what? I can't just add more time. We can fix a lot of things. I get clients that come to me and need all types of help with getting out of debt and you know we, we go in, we dispute some things on their report. Um, I can help them figure out how to pay off their credit cards more efficiently, but guess what? We can't get time back. I can't fix that. So time value is very important. How you handle your credit cards right now is very important to how it's gonna affect you 10 years from now or 20 years from now. Um, if you default on something right now, it's gonna have a huge effect obviously for seven to 10 years or more. So it's very important to understand what time value is when it, with regards to your credit score. Um, you know, obviously credit inquiries. Don't have Joe Smo and everybody else pull your credit. Every time you get your credit pulled, it's three to seven point ding. And that's not counting mortgages and cars. They're, you know, sometimes can be a little bit higher. Um, but so if you're going over and over again and you're getting your credit dinged, that's a problem, okay? So you have to know what your credit score is. Um, Another real quick little story. So a couple, when was it? Gosh, I guess it was four years ago now. So four years ago, I went out, I, I decided I, I wanted a red convertible. I didn't really care what kind of red convertible. Just, I'm a girl, so I just wanted a red convertible. <laughs> you know, the whole, like, what kind? I'm like, I don't care. But anyway, so I went online, and I, I found, you know, actually a Mercedes. It was a red Mercedes CLK 320 convertible, okay? I walked into, the, well, I actually didn't even have to walk into the lot. They actually brought the car to me, which is even better. Mercedes is great like that. But the thing was is that I knew when I went to buy the car, I knew how much I can afford. I knew what my credit score was. And before I actually walked in the door to buy that car, I had a blank check in my hand. And the reason for that is buying power. So anytime you're going to buy anything, you need to know those, those two things what is your credit score and what can you afford? Out the door. Don't let Ford or Mercedes or Honda tell you that. 
you should know that for yourself. And whatever they try to tell you, tell them, forget it. It doesn't matter. Um, so when I walked in the door, I had those three things. The blank check is just so that I can be like, I don't care what you say. I, I got my own money. Um, it was just for that added value. Um, and so I knew what, to, what I was going to spend. I knew what I could qualify for because I already qualified before I even walked in the door. You can go to CapitalOne.com, get a blank check the next day. Easy. Now, the check isn't necessarily mean that I wanted to use Capital One, but I wanted to be like, oh, look what I got. Um, so the, the reason for doing that was so that when Mercedes said to me, well, we don't really offer that rate that you're looking for, I could say, well, I don't care, I already have it. And then magically, what did they do? They found me a better rate. Why? Because they knew I didn't have to use their bank, and they get a kickback from every lender um, if they use that lender. So for them, it was smart to give me a better deal. So I was making like $280 monthly payments on a Mercedes, and my friends were paying like $350 for a Honda. Why? Because I knew what I wanted, I knew what I could afford, and I wasn't going to allow anything or anybody stand in the way of what I could afford. A lot of people get into situations where they're buying this expensive stuff, trying to keep up with the Joneses and you know whatever, and they can't afford it. So you have to know what you can afford. You have to know what your credit is at all times. How many of you know what your credit score is right now? Two, three, four, five. Okay, so we got a few people to know right now today what their credit score is. You get a free credit report online, and if you go to Credit Karma, if those of you that don't know your score, CreditKarma.com will give you a free credit score every single day if you want one. Yes. They only use TransUnion. They only use one company. There's three companies out there. Now, it doesn't really necessarily matter because you're using it for the benefit of just having a mental note of where you are. When you're going to buy something, you need to know what all three scores are. But until you're going to purchase something, it doesn't really matter. Just the mental note of how well am I doing? And to keep track of like, okay, what is this? I don't, this isn't mine. You should know if there's something on there that doesn't belong to you. I had something like some lady lived in Indiana. I, I was like, that's, that's not mine, you know, but here, I guess they, they got the names were close or whatever. So you should know what's on your score. Um, and then finally, just to, just to kind of, um, you know, close with this, is that the biggest thing that I've learned in my life and the reason why I am here today goes back to what I said in the beginning, fear. And once I learned that most of the things that we're fearful of are irrelevant, then you can do anything. You know, people are scared of all different types of things for all different reasons, but that fear is completely irrelevant. People are scared to get in the ocean because they're sharks. Well, what is there, one shark attack every, I mean, it's, it's, it's negligible. It doesn't matter. I'll jump in any ocean at any time, go snorkeling, and hopefully, fingers crossed, nothing bad happens. But the chance, I have a better chance of winning the lottery, and that hasn't happened. So we have to learn to get past our fears, and we have to learn how to go out and seek the information that we need. There is somebody that knows something about something you don't know. And there's people in this room that know a lot of stuff about something I have no idea about. But we need to start sharing information and learning from each other, especially as a community, because as a community, it's our goal to help each other, or it should be. Because we all should want to be successful, and I want to help you know, Edwin be successful, and I know he wants to help me be successful. And we do that by sharing this information and knowledge on a regular basis and coming to events like this. So I want to thank all of you for coming, and I really appreciate it. Thank you all.